In this video, I will help you understand about chi-square test, what it is and how it is utilized to judge relationship between two categorical variables in machine learning. So let's get started. So chi-square test is also a hypothesis test. which uses the chi-square distribution to check the probability values. So in this test, we compute a test statistic known as chi-squared. Okay, so I'll come to that. It is based out of cross tabulation and it will be more effective to visualize if we discuss it with the context. So the context here is of a supervised machine learning classification scenario. So this particular scenario happens when you have a target variable which is categorical. So this loan approval target variable is categorical. So when I'll be judging the predictors like whether this predictor is correlated or not, this is correlated or not. So I will face two scenarios either categorical target variable versus continuous predictor categorical target variable versus continuous predictor or categorical target versus categorical predictor. So in the first setting when you have categorical target and continuous predictor in the previous video I discussed that we use ANOVA there. And in this scenario where the categorical target is to be measured or is to be uh, analyzed or is to be correlated with the categorical predictor, then we use chi-square. How do we, how do we basically understand whether a categorical variable is correlated with another categorical variable? So consider this scenario, let's say, let's say there is a variable called gender. So we are trying to analyze whether being female or being male affects the approval of your loan. So, so you gather data and then you try to count the number of cases because both of these values are strings. So you do not find mean values or you do not find median values because it's simply not possible. Both are strings, both are categorical variables. Even if it were number, like even if it were 1 or 0, still you should not, if it was like this, still you should not calculate mean or median values. It's totally absurd for categorical data, even if it is in numeric form, you should not attempt to calculate mean or median value. So, so how do we analyze whether gender is being related with the loan approval target variable or not? So you cross tabulate. So you say, tell me what are the unique gender values are. Let's say male and female. And then you write down, okay, uh, what are the loan approval statuses? So approval is either yes or no. Either yes or no. So you can simply cross tabulate and count. How many cases were there where the gender was male and the approval was made? So let's say, let me write down just some, some random numbers. Let's say uh, 50 cases and where approval did not happen or your application was rejected. So let's say five. Okay. Similarly for, um, similarly for female category, how many, how many cases were approved? How many loans were approved? So let's say 70 loans were approved and how many cases were rejected so somewhere around nine cases were rejected right so so what i see is a um, kind of similarity between the acceptance and the rejections and if you try to plot it it will start giving you some information so if you try to plot it uh, let me just shift this whole thing into one corner so that it's easy to relate so this is the first scenario. So here, if you try to plot this, it looks something like this. 
let's say for each gender gender male and gender female what are the type of loan approvals for males how many loan approvals happened so 50 happened so in the y axis let's say approval uh, like frequency and how many uh, loans were rejected so 5 this is the ratio for male so on for female you can you can try to plot the similar thing 70 cases slightly bigger bar and how many cases were rejected nine cases were rejected so if you see the ratio so the ratio of uh, approval versus non approval is it's looking kind of similar right so if i change my category from male to female uh, or if I see uh, male versus female, I don't see a striking change in the way I see the approvals. I say that, okay, for male also there were so many approvals were there and for females also there were so many approvals and in the same proportion rejections were also there. So the approval versus rejection ratio is kind of similar. If it is kind of similar, then I say these variables are not correlated. This type of graph is bad for me. The variables are not correlated. Now consider another scenario. If I had some kind of data, gender, male, female, and loan approval. Is something like this 50 loans were approved and say five were rejected and for females 10 were approved and say 60 were rejected now in this scenario if you draw the graph you will start getting some different kind of information now you can literally see for male and female category like if a male is applying then the chances that the loan will be approved is very high and the chances that the loan will get rejected is very low but if a female is applying the chances that the loan will get approved is small as compared as compared to the chances of the loan getting rejected a lot of loans are getting rejected for female female applicants so now this curve shows me some, some information regarding the loan approval. So I can say that now based on gender, I can predict whether the loan will be approved or not based on this data because I can see the ratios. If the gender is female, then very likely the loan will be rejected. And if the gender is male, then it's very likely the loan will be accepted. Now this is, this is helping me to bifurcate the loan approval or it is helping me to predict the loan approval based on the gender and if I am able to do so then gender is correlated. So if the ratios of cross tabulation or the count of each category value versus each other categories value is different it is not following a similar pattern like over here then this is good for me and I say the variables are correlated. Right? Now this thing which we are doing intuitively based on these graphs, this is exactly what is done by a chi-square distribution. So chi-square distribution says what is the observed distribution versus what is expected. Now in a fair world you have, you accept, uh, you expect this kind of a treatment that the kind of approval which is present for male is same for female. But in observance in in reality it is not like that there is some difference in the distribution like over here the distribution is different so in this scenario the correlation is there and chi square judges this now chi square tries to test a hypothesis and that hypothesis is variables are not correlated 
this is in terms of machine learning and in terms of pure statistical concept of chi square it tries to prove that the variables are independent so it assumes that the variables are independent and when the variables are independent when they will not be correlated if the distribution is as expected right so it judges the the chi square statistic says what is the observed frequencies observed frequencies minus what is the expected frequencies of distribution square this divided by expected so this statistic is the chi square test statistic and just like other hypothesis tests we compute this chi square chi square test statistic and look for the p value in the chi square distribution so the chi square distribution looks like this all right just like just like your f test or f statistic it also uh, peaks somewhere somewhere near to 1 and this is 0 right so if the value is very far away from uh, one or very far away from 0 then the probability of getting such a chi square statistic is very low and the p value which we get will determine whether we accept or reject if the p value is greater than 0.05 we say accept h not and when you accept h not you are saying the variables are not correlated so you reject the predictor and otherwise if the probability value is less than 0.05 which is the common threshold then you say reject h not and when you reject h not you say the variables are correlated so you see in in both these tests previously when i discussed about anova there also if the probability value was low then we accepted the variable and rejected the h not here also if the probability value comes out to be low less than 0.05 then we say reject h not which indirectly means variables are correlated based on this p value we either accept the predictor or we reject the predictor in our feature selection steps and based on this we further we further go ahead and create our machine learning models all right so i hope now you understand what is chi square test chi square test basically judges the observed frequencies of the categorical variables versus the expected frequency of the categorical variables and computes this chi square test statistic and then based on this probability density curve of chi square it gives us the p value and using this p value we either accept or reject the h not and if the variances or sorry if the uh, frequencies are similar for both the categories then the variables are not correlated and if the frequencies are different of the ratios of uh, these categories are different then the variables are correlated because i am gaining some information by changing each category all right so i hope you will be able to explain this in your interview so all the best for that